Uh, the next speaker that will be coming is from the Environmental Justice. She's a coordinator uh, for Minnesota Neighborhoods Organizing for Change. Please give a warm welcome for Janice Watts. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. There it is. So I wanted to answer these questions um, kind of with my story. So recycling for me was just something that my family and I always did. Growing up, I quickly became the enforcer for family gatherings to make sure that everybody recycled. Like, throw your cans at the recycling. It's not hard. So it was a complete shock to me when I started college. I went to Hamlin University, started there, and discovered that they only had recycling in only three buildings out of our entire campus. Um, one of them being my dorm hall, so lucky for me, I guess. But I just figured recycling was something everybody did. So I started organizing with Emperg. Shout out to Emperg. Um, as my very first campaign around environmental justice um, to get recycling wide scale on campus. But it was a real education to me because recycling wasn't taught to me in this framing of zero waste. It was something we did because we knew these materials could be repurposed. And... Uh, and because when you grow up with practically nothing like my parents did, you reused everything you could. And so that's how they taught me about this importance of zero waste. You did it out of survival and make and do with what you had. So this experience was really clarifying for me for many reasons. One, I started organizing, of course. Uh, but it started to see that environmental issues are framed in a way um, that was really the, of the system of white-centric privileged environmentalism. Because believe me, even though as hard as I tried, this, the narrative of our campaign wasn't around repurposing the really importance of recycling and reusing, it was around being green, as it was a trend. So learning this really pushed me to seek out what environmental issues really meant to me, for what I understood to be, what, for what I understood to be environmental justice. Even though I didn't have the language for it then, we weren't really calling it environmental justice, but I knew it couldn't only be defined, um, it'd be a defined environmental issue in that way because it was something much more closer to me and how I was raised and about my family's history. It took me nine years to find Knock and to know that environmental issues encompass, environmental justice encompass everything that I felt about environmental issues. So that's why it's really important for in order for zero waste to be equitable, that we evaluate it through the lens of racial justice. So people of color have been practicing zero waste practices for centuries. Thank you, right? We've been doing this <laughs> and leading the way. But the mainstream environmental movement has largely, at best, ignored those cultural practices and at worst destroyed them. So that we don't see ourselves in this movement like I said, yeah, we've been doing it all along. So as well as policies like zero waste and sustainability sound, if they go unchecked by racial equity, then we only continue these cycles of exclusive, unproductive, and false environmental solutions like the Herc incinerator, which is a garbage burner dressed as renewable energy that's continuously polluting communities of color. So that's why it's really important to make sure environmental issues are understood in a comprehensive manner, so that it includes all issues, uh, so we can have holistic solutions. An economy that protects and provides for workers. An education system, education system that teaches many different forms of environmentalism. So that our homes, our schools, and our workplaces are safe, clean, and prosperous. Engaging communities in this holistic view is the challenge that I face as an organizer, but it really gives the best opportunity to bring many different perspectives to the table for environmental justice. This opens up the space for many forms of environmental racism to be examined. I was asked to mention what really impacted me about going up to Sacred Stone, which I had the honor to do with a couple people in this room, to stand against the Dakota Access Pipeline of the North Dakota. This movement really illuminates the destruction of extraction on land, on water, and on people. People just like the environment are not to be wasted. The trauma that's been caused by environmental impacts us all on, 
environmental harm impacts us all physically, mentally, and culturally. We must know that and we must name it if we really want to get to true zero waste solutions. So I'm really glad that the study of the environment has really expanded to include economics and health and culture. Um, so that this really means, so that really means environmental justice. And it makes my work every day so exciting. And I'm really grateful to, like Bryant said, to be living my dream. It's always been, it's always been my passion to really examine environmental racism at the highest levels. So because this is also interconnected, and the more that we keep that at the center of all of our work, I know we'll get to zero waste future. Thank you. Yeah.